votes, it's really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Yes, hello there. My guest today is Femi Adishino. He is a special advisor on media and publicity to the President Muhammadu Buhari. Prior to this, Femi Adishino was a staff of the Sun newspapers where he rose to editor-in-chief. He also served a two-year term as president of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. With many of his columns in the Vanguard and Concord newspapers, Femi probably has brought these experiences into the role as the presidential spokesman. However, in my interview with him in Abuja, he speaks of the challenges of constantly being on the hot seat, especially given the recent talk about the spiritual side of Asa Rock. He also speaks on the unspiritual side, as well as managing the brand of the Commander-in-Chief. This particular one, he agrees, is not a very easy one to do. Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Thank it's you. additional. It's nice Thank to have you. you. On the hotspot. But no, my show is not a hotspot. Is it a hotspot? Great. So it's, uh, that's reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hotspot. You are the one on the hotspot. Oh, seriously that's speaking? Your job is a hotspot. Seriously speaking? <laughs> <laughs> seriously speaking. But really, really, I mean, being an SA media, isn't it a hotspot? Isn't it a hot button job on its own? It is. It is. I, I can tell you it is. Because uh, you are one under pressure. To constantly. Constantly. Your attention is needed almost around the clock from all parts of the world. Apart from your principal, not from your principal. No, 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 not from your principal. From my media constituency, which is the media. You're sleeping and it's 2 a.m. and your phone rings and you say, can I speak to Mr. Deshino? I say, yes, Mr. Deshino speaking, but do you know what time it is in Nigeria? It's 2 a.m. They say, I'm sorry, I'm speaking from... It could be the U.S., it could be yeah, somewhere, yeah. somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't consider a time difference, but it's part of the job to answer them at whatever hour. Now, as a journalist, right, this is not unusual for you. Okay. You are used to being under pressure in the newsroom. Yeah. So this is, I mean, if, if, unless, of course, it's a different kind of pressure. Well, I, I, I think it's similar. It's similar. I, in fact, I tell myself that what I'm doing now is just an extension of what I used to do mm -hmm. in, in, in the newsroom. I did that for all of 29 years, so it prepared me for what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. But does, did it prepare you for the, for the kind of attacks and um, feedback that you get? For example, what was that saying that they said, you described those who are talking about the Boko Haram issue, this is my flag, as the Willie Willis. You do call Willie mm, Willis. No, 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 not, not the Boko Haram issue. Okay, it's, it's just those who are not patient enough with the government. As early as a few weeks into the administration, they had begun to make all that noise. And I felt, oh, this was a new administration. You needed to be patient. You needed to see the direction. You needed to see where it was headed. But they began to make all the noise and make all the noise. They wanted magic. And then I said, oh, oh, why are they wailing like whalers? You know the Bob Marley uh, yeah. band. Mm -hmm. It was Bob Marley and the Wailing Whalers. So mm -hmm. I just said, why are they wailing like whalers? And then it, it caught on. And Were they unjustified, though? I mean, when you look back now. Yeah, yes, I, 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 think it, I think it was rather early. I think it even, is even still too early. In More a, than one and a half years in after? A, in a, in a four-year term. In a mm -hmm. four-year term, it's 48 months the life of an administration in our own democracy, mm -hmm. 48 months. You don't, in one month, two months, begin to shout and expect government to turn stone to bread immediately. But you must also realize that people expected much more from our current president, simply because he had tried three times before. And then now, it meant he should have been prepared. He should have known that I'm going there to do X, except, of course, he didn't know he was going to get in, in you know, the fourth time. Well, and you've been with him for a long time. 
Yes, I have been. Since he began to run in 2003, mm -hmm. I had always supported him. I had always written urging Nigerians to look in his direction because I believed he could and make a And then it was not a function of because you, he was your friend? Or no, was... no, not a function of that. In fact, when he was military head of state, I remember I was uh, a third year student in the university when he came. and. Uh, uh, I, when, when he was overthrown, we were just leaving university. So that shows you that I, I was mature enough to know the horse I was backing. I knew he was leading the country in a very good direction. In that time? In that time. Even with all the austerity that he took uh, oh, us through? Oh, yes, yes, because mm -hmm. I, knew, I knew that if Nigerians could just be patient and pass through that phase, we had a good face ahead of us. Unfortunately, they didn't let him do what he wanted to do. So since then, I had always believed he could take Nigeria forward. Why? Uh, somehow, somehow, uh, you just meet people that maybe their lifestyle, their ways just resonate with your own. I was a student in the then University of Ife. He was pr uh, head of state in Lagos. We never met. But looking at him from afar, I just knew that what this What was man, the song? Was it the anti-corruption song? Was it the discipline song? What was it that <laughs> was playing in your head? I think discipline. Discipline. Because if you know how I grew up, I grew your up... Your father was a principal. Oh, my father was a school principal, and he ran the home like he ran the school. Mm -hmm. So when he came with, virtually with a whip then, wanting to whip Nigerians into line, it just... Uh, it resonated res with you. resonated with me. And I believe that if, if, if indiscipline was removed from Nigeria, a lot of other problems would be solved. And you still believe that? I still believe that. I also believe in integrity. Integrity, very, very important. You know, we had always known him as a man of integrity. So I felt if we had a kind of person leading Nigeria, it will percolate down, and uh, Nigerians and Nigeria will never. So why be the same why was again. it that it didn't seem like he was prepared? Because I mean, everybody says, you know, our president is called Baba Goslu, right? And, and he said he, re he reacted to that <laughs> before he said they call me Baba Goslu, yes. and he said I will be slow and I will be steady. Okay. Yeah, there's I'll still a lot of wisdom in that saying. Slow yeah, but people need, action. people need action. You yeah. must admit that. Yeah. But the question I was asking you to respond to, which I'll come back to this Baba Goslo issue, is wasn't he prepared? I mean, we didn't expect it to take so long. Even if it's taking, it's been slow, he should have come prepared because he had tried three times. It took him months for the first list of ministers to come out. One would have thought a man who was ready to lead would know exactly his major players are going to give positions. If you listened to the October 1 broadcast last year, not the one of this year, mm -hmm. there was a line in that uh, speech where he said, order is better than speed. Order is better than speed. That already shows you what he is doing. You can be in a speed and then you mumble everything up. You, you, you end up in a jumble yourself. But when you do things orderly, at the end of the day, you will achieve more results. And that was the style he adopted when he came. I must, uh, we, we all must agree that the enormity of the problem was underestimated. Hmm. It was underestimated. The party chairman has said that, engineer and former governor of Ekiti State said that recently too. The problem was underestimated. Isn't so, that a function of incompetence if you underestimated the problem? No, 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 no. Who, who ever thought that Nigeria had been run into a hole like we have now seen? Whoever thought there was a facade that made you think that everything was okay with the country. But Nigeria was actually in a hole. As at November 2014, the average income for Nigeria a month was $3.2 billion from oil. Average. Now, by June, July 2015, it dropped to $500 million. From $3.2 billion, what can you do? with that kind. You couldn't have foreseen that? You couldn't have foreseen it because nobody knew that mm -hmm. that crash in oil prices will come and it will be so steep. And then when the crash came, the next thing was to say, where, where are the savings? And then you looked and there was nothing. So it was real, real trouble. That well, you know, it's also quite pretty difficult for Nigerians to believe some of these things. And I'll tell you why. One of the things that the last administration was accused of was high cost of governance. 
Aso Villa, for example, spending tons of money on feeding people. There doesn't seem to have been a change even in this administration as well. <laughs> you, 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 you need to come to Aso Villa to yeah. know that there is a lot of change, lot of change. Tell me about it. Because uh, I don't see all that uh, feeding and gorging yourself and then just being extravagant all, all over the place. I don't see it. Not in the office, not in the residence of the president because I go there often. I don't see How come you don't have a jeep? I saw you in the Pujo. I swear to see you in some. <laughs> you know, is some 505. Well, five, well, well. Five, well, five, well. Five, five, five. I, I, I think that also resonates with my lifestyle. I, I, if you give me a jeep, I'll ride it. Yeah. In Lagos, I, I'm at the car I rode and still ride when I go to Lagos. It's a jeep. So I'm not saying I don't ride it. I mm -hmm. ride it. But then there's nothing wrong with a Pujo. For me, I know how to abound and I know how to abase. Whatever mm -hmm. is the situation I'm mm -hmm. in, I'm just comfortable. But you know, some people have also accused you of incompetence, that you are, you are, you are just, you're not doing enough to give your principal the kind of, maybe, maybe your principal is just a bad product. Well, even Jesus Christ, they accused him. They, they even said he had a demon, the son of God. So it's not surprising to me. Don't they accuse the president? Don't they call? Didn't you say he seemed unprepared? Yes. So they always accuse people. Uh -huh. But in my heart of hearts, I know that this assignment I'm on, I'm giving my best to it, and I'll still continue to give my best to it while. So is your uh, principal an easy it. product to sell? Because you're supposed to sell, and what's your job? Tell me. My, my, my job is to project the president. Whatever he is doing, inform Nigerians, educate them about it, and then amplify what he has done. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to defending him, I also defend him. Yeah, so okay. you think he's an easy product to do all of these things for? For a man ah. who people say he's slow, yeah. for a man who people have described as a bigot, for a man who people say um, he's, um, he's an Islamic, you know, jihadist, <laughs> you know, and everything seems to be appearing to be like that. I'll ask you one question to respond to. Okay. Why was he slow in stopping the herdsmen, the issue of the herdsmen, addressing it frontally? Was he slow? I believe he was. No, I don't think he was. Mm -hmm. Because the issue of the herdsmen is a serious issue. It's a national issue. And uh, the president responded to it as he should have done. Because... I am privy to certain things you may not be privy that's to. That's why you're here. Yes, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. I remember when that thing happened, uh, there, there was an instruction. He gave the security agencies, particularly the then Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arase. So, yeah. I was there. So I know how the president responded to it. But um, why didn't it, you tell it's us? Not, it's, it's not, no, it's not everything you say at a particular time. There are some things you keep uh, for the time being. Uh, there are some problems you solve charging in. There are some that if you charge in, you create more problems. Hmm. So that is why you need to take things systematically and methodically. And a, that's how the person I'll take a break it. at this point in time so that we can breathe <laughs> and then go to the market. <laughs> and then I'll, re I'll return to continue my conversations with the SA media to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Additional. Don't go away. <laughs> 